And this leads us into why X pipes and H pipes are really, really important on odd fire engines because we need to balance that uh, pause in cylinder pressure on one bank versus the high pressure on the other. So the X pipe obviously is designed more for horsepower, not torque, where low speed, a H pipe will deal with uh, low speed torque. And, and the reason's pretty simple if we look at it. As we increase the velocity here, and, and, and again, what we're trying to do is say this bank's got the two pressure pulses, five and seven coming down. Well, they're able to exchange with the other side, but it only tends to do it efficiently at slower air speeds, because obviously as this velocity starts to get too high, it doesn't want to turn. Uh, so we get very little wave formation moving back and forth. That's why this is more of a torque thing, a H-pipe, where an X-pipe is more of a horsepower thing. So no matter how much velocity we get, it's very easy for that to transition. So same thing, we've got two high pressure pulses, five and seven running down, while this is in a low area now. Okay, and so is this here. Um, so what can actually happen is, as this high pressure gets to the collector area, some of the gas is gonna go into this section here and help balance the pressure waves of the engine out. So, because remember, we're gonna get dirt, dirt, nothing, dirt, 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 and same this side, we're gonna get nothing, dirt, 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 dirt. So, now they're able to intermingle and cross and get a better average velocity through that collector and do it at high speeds and only make your horsepower. Generally, 10 to 15 horsepower on a 500 horsepower all day long. These will still make you horsepower, but you see it more in torque. All right, so that leads us to our next question, which was uh, port size, CNC versus hand port. Now I wanna cover this. All right, so this leads us into CNC versus hand port, which someone brought up in the comments, over a thousand horsepower, it doesn't matter. That couldn't be further from the truth. The right CSA nets us everywhere. So uh, there's been tons of comparisons with this, but what I wanna try and highlight is that the volumetric efficiency comes down to the fundamentals of cross-sectional area. How well we can harness that velocity mechanism that I've been talking about, get it as close to the point of pain as we can, but stay under that line. The better we do that, the more horsepower we make everywhere. The more horsepower per PSI with boost induction um, and everything. And we see this in the two valve game. Better heads, better, you look at Proline. I, I remember uh, Chad used to stir me up about my long runners on my turbo stuff 20 years ago. And uh, now all the Proline stuff is nice and nice and long because they're trying to make better atmospheric VEs, which leads to a compound effect. So if we make 100 horsepower NA, we make 100 horsepower additionally every atmosphere we add. So that's 200 horsepower at 15, 300 horsepower at 30, and so on and so on and so on. This is why CSA getting that right and looking at every engine as already boosted by 14 point seven pounds of atmospheric pressure is so, so important. Uh, and we're gonna have a look quickly here. So, and this is something that I've done on you know, 14, 1500 horsepower RBs because they're such a horrible port as far as size goes from the factory and people go and see and see them out bigger and they see less everywhere, less horsepower per PSI. And, th and this can be in the couple of hundreds. Um, so one of my hand ported heads in big horsepower, we've talked about the circuit stuff before, but in the, uh, and even Dave from Head Games has gone into this, that the better we can develop the NA part of the engine, so it's vo a proper volumetric efficiency profile of that induction, the way everything works, the harmonics of the engine, everything, the less stress that's on the engine and the better tune window we also have. Uh, anyone who's tuned for a, a little while will understand this. You'd rather tune a car at 20 PSI than 40 PSI. Uh, the tune window is a lot wider at 20 PSI and less things can go wrong. Uh, also then there's temperature density variations that we need to chase. But if this black line was a CNC'd port uh, and the blue line was a hand ported 
support. Even if the blue line was 10, 15 CFM less, if that average CSA is better targeted to the RPM that we have, it will always make more horsepower, more torque, more everything. Uh, that's because, again, this is a gated mechanism, on, off, on, off. So we have to start inertia every single time. And boost is nothing but a measurement of pressure. So in the planum, we have P, pressure here, that the turbo is supplied or the supercharger is supplied. But until this velocity here starts to move, we're just measuring restriction. And, and this is why a better uh, shaped induction moves air quicker. It moves those molecules out of the way so that boost pressure can now fill back in behind it. And this is where we see massive changes in our pressure differential and horsepower per PSI, the better the induction system is designed. Like I was talking about the supercharger manifolds, we we're putting runner length in, losing boost because it's direct drive, and making more horsepower. So then by the time we added the additional horsepower, we'll still maybe a PSI lower and we're up 100 horsepower. And these are on small horsepower engines, or we're up 200 horsepower and some 1500 horsepower ones. Or back when I was helping Medill with the boat racing, we're up 300 horsepower on decent 2000 horsepower stuff. So it very much does influence. And the CSA, if we just talk averages for now, I'm not talking about shapes. This is pretty much how it works in all engines. So optimal horsepower and torque, where you want it, the CSA needs to be dead right. If it's too big, we lose horsepower. Even with boost, we lose horsepower per PSI. So instead of making 600 horsepower at 10 PSI, now we're making 550 because we're too big and you'll see it in the horsepower curve. It's very laggy. It, they don't hit the converter as well. They don't come on as well. We, we see this in circuit racing so much more than we do in drag racing, but we're starting to see it more and more in drag racing as people develop better cylinder heads, better intakes, better exhaust, longer exhaust, getting everything right. Trying to find all those few percents everywhere, that's how it's done. But the better we can carry that velocity, the more we reduce the pressure in the planum, the more it can fill, the more mass we get into the cylinder. So CSA is so important that it's tied to the RPM and cubic capacity that we're doing because we cannot change the pressure offset to the RPM. Meaning if we've got a four inch bore and it goes down 3.75 inches, it can only offset that X amount of volume every single time, no matter what it is. At 7,000 RPM, it's doing the exact same thing. So if we don't get this path the right size and get us to peak on that hump, we're either too slow, costing a horsepower, or too fast, developing a little extra torque and capping it and, and, and killing the engine, all right? Uh, so that brings us into uh, texture and I'll do a quick breakdown on texture probably gonna need a video series just for this on itself let's do it all right so that takes us into surface RA what is surface RA surface RA is basically just a measurement of how coarse the texture is again I've talked about this before uh, in intake manifolds, we do not want polished intake manifolds because it is an active boundary mechanism. And again, it's a gated bi-directional wave. We have waves going up and down. We also, 90% of the uh, stuff we're doing is still a wet intake. Uh, so we want to keep that fuel shear mechanism happening even at the boundary layer. So had some comments saying that um, boundary really doesn't make any difference at all. Uh, probably one of the first things you'll learn in engine development is the finish of the surface does affect your horsepower and torque by about two to three uh, percent. Larry, the inventor of Pike Max, have proven this. Darren Morgan, uh, David Visor, there's tons of guys ourselves. We've done this as well. Um, so it's really not a debate and I'll explain the physics behind why. Uh, and also we're doing a series for Einstein. Uh, we're gonna put up some papers on there with 
different RAs, different shapes, different textures, and also the convection mechanism with different RAs and different shapes. There's a real smart lady, I can't think of a name at the moment, but she does a, a lot of development for the US Navy just on this RA and uh, how we're able to get very, very low friction coefficients with the same measured RA, but different profiles. And this is where I'll get into dimple port. I'm so, sure you've all seen the dimple port um, thing kicking around. Again, I'll explain why it doesn't work, uh, even by the ratios of what it is. Uh, if you understand golf balls, I've actually done a video on this um, before. But basically, um, dimples increase surface drag to reduce wake negative pressure. In other words, the dimples are holding the air on the ball longer, so they turn around the object longer and reduce that negative pressure, that parachute that's holding the golf ball back in the first place. So it's not the actual dimples that make it fly further. The dimples just create more friction in the active boundary condition, cause a boundary swell, and allow that air to not separate off the ball as easy. So they can reduce that negative pressure weight behind the ball by about 50%. So now let's get into surface RAs. What we have is there's a sub layer and so on. I won't get into it this much. Uh, we probably need a full video series on this. But basically, because these engines are obviously bi-directional in the intake wave, on, off, on, off, on, off. We need to accelerate, decel. We want an active boundary layer to obviously keep uh, the fuel alive in the air and to create a little bit of convection, but not too much. Again, this is a balancing act, and this is why generally we see um, optimal temperatures for horsepower up around that 95 degrees, I think it is. It depends on different engines and different castings and stuff, but generally the warmer we get an engine, the more horsepower it'll make uh, because we're getting a little bit more convection. Uh, this is why cold engines um, really have horrible um, homogenization uh, factors. Uh, one of them being that we can get uh, a, a little more uh, heat into that sub layer, which helps any fuel that's falling out of the airstream uh, phase change and helps break it up basically. So if we look at a dimple, uh, they're about half a mil deep by three mil wide. And the profile isn't aerodynamically, you know, you know expedient or whatever you want to, because air can collide into here and these molecules are gonna bounce back up into the stream. This is how we get such a thick boundary layer with a dimple port. So where you've seen them successful is someone's got a port that's way too big and they put dimples in and it actually shrinks that dynamic element. It doesn't work well as far as horsepower and torque, but they can still get them to make horsepower, especially if you'll see someone will dimple the entry of a port instead of what they could have done is just put skimmed it with a bit of um, uh, poly bog or splash guard, made it a mil thicker, so reduce the cross-sectional area. If they would have probed it, they would have seen the velocity come back up anyway. But Let's just talk about this for now. So we're gonna get more molecular interaction, molecules bouncing back up into the mainstream. And this creates more collision, creates more heat, more convection, far more convection. Actually, I'm sharing some studies again on uh, dimples in heat exchangers and how they're able to increase uh, heat uh, convection by 140, 150% and even better. So. From a convection point of view, they're great, but we want to limit convection, or what I should say is we want to encourage convection to a certain amount, by, but reduce the drag coefficient of the port itself. And, and the other aspect we need to look at is the ratios. So the ratio of a dimple compared to a 60 grit, I think it works out about 260 uh, 220 times bigger. So that's 220 times bigger in RA than like a 60 grit port and about 10 to 15 times greater than a burr finish. But also you need to look at the profile that the RA creates. We can have two of the same RA profiles. One, two. Which one do you think is going to have less drag coefficient? Obviously this one. 
Why? Because the molecules coming in are going to tend to bounce in the flow direction where molecules that are going to interact here are going to come straight back into the airstream. So this is where we see that's roughly what a cast uh, manifold will look like, this sort of RA, where if we just run it down with a burr or a 60 grit, straight away, even a cylinder head, if you take any cylinder head and just decast it, even if you don't want to get into porting and changing CSA, just take the roughness out, you'll make anywhere from 5 to 15 CFM and you'll make two or three percent horsepower so you might end up making 10 to 15 horsepower and 500 horsepower engine just by decasting now that's because we've improved the drag coefficient so we're able to get air in without the boundary being too thick and remember the boundary is a ratio of the ra relative to airspeed as well meaning it only gets worse with more airspeed so if this is uh, 0.5 our boundary is going to be about that 1.2 mil. That's huge. And then vice versa for these ones. If we're only talking uh, 0 0.1, our boundaries may be going to be 0 0.3, depending on the airspeeds, 0 0.25. And same with the 60 grit. Very, very small. And we need to control this. Because, and, and the other problem is, which I see is, a lot of people will try and measure a boundary layer on a flow bench. A flow bench isn't a dynamic environment, so you can't probe a flow bench and say, oh, look, uh, there's not a lot of airspeed along that um, floor or roof or, or whatever. It, it'll give you an indication of where you can feel and accelerate that, but that's not dynamic velocity that we'll see in a running engine. And this is why RA plays a part. As I said, Larry's proven, I think he made 17 horsepower back and forth between uh, a burr finish and sanded, showing that too fine also costs us horsepower. And then uh, Dave Weizard did something similar. Uh, we did something similar even with exhaust. We were able to micro-polish exhaust and found it gave us uh, more horsepower, more torque. But the, the key here, the exactly the same port, only mirror polished on the exhaust, we were able to see 300 RPM earlier boost thresholds, meaning we were seeing boost earlier. Why? Because we're not pulling heat out of that air. So we're not robbing the air of energy and putting it into the cooling system. Again, this is why petrol engines are so inefficient when it comes to thermal efficiency. So, you know, uh, what I call a poor man's ceramic coating is micro polishing the exhaust because we've reduced the RA of the surface dramatically. So uh, if you think of a sheet of corrugated iron or, or, or this, if we were to stretch that out, it might be that long. So there's far more surface area in, in this section for air to convect into it, where if we just made it flat and shiny, we've reduced the surface area by 50% and hence reduce how much heat goes into the cylinder. This is why we need to look at intake and exhaust differently. They're not the same thing, not only velocity-wise, temperature-wise, but even how they react to the, the uh, sound of speed in the exhaust First, the sound of speed in the intake. One is wet, dry, sticky, and cold. The other one is super hot, viscous, and fast flowing. All right, that'll do it, guys. I'll see you in the comments.